Inside of a vacuum, this would be considered a really good Sonic game. It would be like, oh, hey, yeah, this is actually really cool. It introduces some nice ideas, has some interesting levels, and some really interesting kind of character customization and story elements, which is, I mean, the story is Sonic-based, but the character creation is actually something I was quite impressed with. If you're thinking it's going to be a cringy sort of situation, it's actually not. It's actually fairly interesting, but we'll obviously talk about that a little bit later. However, we don't live in a void, and we've had better Sonic games in the past, which makes this game feel a little bit strange. It feels like a spinoff, which it may be. Say, maybe Sega had some interesting ideas and like, oh, we'll make a spinoff about it and then end up being a little bit more of a larger game than they were thinking of it. But at the same time, this game isn't particularly long either. It has its problems, but it's still a decent game. However, I might not want to recommend it to everyone. Michael here with an impressions review of Sonic Forces. Now, at the beginning of these videos, this is a momentum platformer, by the way. If you don't know what Sonic is, go ahead and look it up. It's kind of a mesh between Sonic Generations and Sonic Lost World. Anyways, normally at the beginning of these videos, I talk about PC performance, stuff like that, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to talk about the character customization right after that. So it's going to be a lot of menus. If you just want to hear my opinions and you want to see some gameplay and stuff like that, feel free to skip ahead. But let's go ahead and begin because there are some PC port specific things that are kind of wrong with this game. Right here off the bat, we get to our gameplay. You have actually a difficulty setting here, which is actually normal and hard. Basically hard is what you would expect from a Sonic game. It's pretty much normal mode. They just didn't want to make people feel bad for going on to easy mode. Normal mode is for people that aren't particularly great at 3D Sonic games. Maybe they have problems with depth perception. Maybe they don't actually play a lot of 3D games at all or a lot of games in general. This is for like the younger audience or maybe the older audience that just isn't that atone to gaming for everyone else just play on hard mode game is super easy on hard mode there's a few parts to where you might end up falling off that mostly has to do with momentum but yeah we'll talk about that a little bit later and then you get pad vibration which you can actually adjust which is actually fairly interesting hints which only show once so there's no reason to turn this off radio is the story bits and so if you're replaying through levels go ahead and turn this off or if you're trying to skip the story go ahead and turn this off i find the levels way better without it when you're actually replaying through them however the story was interesting enough to just keep me there I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then you get voices and text language and stuff like that. Then you have your audio options, multiple volume sliders, super, super awesome. Movies are super loud for some reason, so 7 is fine on default. Your controls, you can rebind absolutely everything. One thing that is kind of annoying is that if you have the movement bound to the left stick or if you have it bound to the D-pad, you cannot use the other one. So on the 2D sections, I had to learn how to use the left thumbstick to actually play it because I couldn't use the D-pad. That was fairly annoying. Also, another complaint with the keyboard controls is once again, you can rebind everything, although I strongly recommend a controller for this game. You can only use the directional keys for the menus and you cannot rebind that, which is a little bit annoying as well. It also doesn't lock the mouse cursor, so you can actually bring it to a second monitor if you're running on two monitors, but it does have full mouse menu support and stuff like that. And you can actually go ahead and go down here and actually click on these as well. So I can be like, okay, that's what I want. And that sort of stuff. And then you have graphics. This is where we'll run into some problems. So you get resolution. It defaults to your max. I have DSR enabled, which means that it just selected my DSR resolution, which I didn't actually want. I'm running it 1340 and it seems to support it fine. It seems to only support down to 1080. Oh no, it actually goes lower. Oh, it actually wasn't doing that before. Okay. Never mind, I take that back. So it seems to actually support more resolutions than it used to. I don't know if that was part of a patch or if it was just my idiocracy. I don't know. So apparently it actually supports a nice selection of resolutions. Has full screen, windowed, and borderless. There is a problem with borderless I'll talk about in a second. And you get to select your monitor, which is actually super, super nice to not have to modify that in window settings. V-Sync, I run with it enabled because this game was tearing like crazy. Might have to do with my system. FPS can be unlocked, but I'm playing with 60 cap, you get brightness, your quality presets. Now, if you're on a lower end machine, do not expect to run this game particularly well. If you have an old machine, this game is not running well on machines that do not have a GPU or games that are running on a really old CPU. It seems to be randomly stuttering, having audio crackling issues. Some people are saying if you go into Steam Big Picture Mode and launch the game that way, it fixes all of those problems. So you can go ahead and try that if you want. It might be how it's trying to implement full screen. When you're running Big Picture Mode, it runs inside of a sort of box and everything. So that might actually be why it fixes that. Also, when I run in borderless mode, I get some weird frame pacing issues to where the frame rate randomly drops down to 20 FPS and I get stuttering. And so I just had to play the game on full screen and it completely fixes that problem for me. I haven't had any of the other performance problems that people were talking about, but it seems like on lower end machines, the game is having a ton of problems actually running the game. And so if you are running on a really low end system that is below mid range, then you're probably not gonna wanna purchase this game or maybe purchase it and expect to have some problems and stuff like that. But you can also drop down those settings, mostly drop down the scattering and blur effects and shadows and those three will actually affect your performance the most from my tests now let's go ahead and go into game 
there is actually character customization to this one, and I actually found it fairly more interesting. It's gonna start me off on the stage that I originally played, but we'll go ahead and play it a little bit later. Let's go ahead and go into Avatar here, because you also have missions and you have Avatar and stuff like that. So here is my cat lady. If we go into the fitting room, you can get a better look at her. You can actually unlock a ton of different customizations and stuff like that, but we're gonna go ahead and say, create a new avatar to actually show it off. Now, once you finish the game, you will unlock being able to create as many avatars as you want, but you do start off and only have one character. So you can select male or female, stuff like that, so we can go with male there are different races the interesting thing about the races is it's not just visual you can actually see on the left side they actually have abilities and they actually have missions tied to these as well and so for example the cat that i was playing on you hold on to some rings after taking damage and they're just little assists and things like that the bird can double jump once again just an assist dropping rings will remain longer than enough to take a damage or drops items towards you and stuff like that and so it's it's kind of interesting to kind of have it and stuff like that. We'll pick dog just so we can show the different puppy ears. It's so cute. And so you can actually have different ears and stuff like that. Each one seems to have three different types. You get your colors and so you can actually completely customize what color you want them. So we're just going to make something that looks ridiculous for the sake of videos. You get a few selections of eyes. I don't like most of the eyes, especially these ones. They look kind of weird, but some people like them. And that's a thing. So we can actually just make it so that he's like, he's a sad puppy. He's going to be a very sad puppy and he's going to be a different color. So here's our body color and stuff like that. One thing I will say is some of the colors are really, really strong and don't mesh well. And so you actually have to take in some creative liberty and figure out which color is going to work the best for you. For example, I would actually change his snout color now that I've seen that it doesn't really work with anything here. But we can make him look like a zombie dog or whatever if we wanted to. And so there you go. And after this, you're actually able to create your character and stuff like that. You get your voice tap, and so you actually have different voices and things like that. And you also have a victory pose, which you can change at any time. We're going to go ahead and cancel out of that, because I don't actually want to make Zombie Doug. All changes will be lost. I'm cool with that. Goodbye. Now we can actually go into our avatar collection here. So you can actually see there's actually a fair amount of sort of ways you can actually customize. You can also customize the different ways. Oops, I didn't want to save it. Nope, I want to select it. There we go. You can actually customize them so you can make them look pretty. You can make them look babies or you can make it end up looking in a lot of different other ways. You get a bunch of different customizations and stuff like that. This is actually a fairly interesting mechanic just for the simple fact that there's a lot to unlock here. You don't start off with all of these options. You actually go through the game and you actually unlock them as you're playing. There's some cringe the characters you can make and some people have you can just leave it on default if you absolutely want to and it really doesn't have any effect on the gameplay aside from changing your wispin which is actually the utility item that you actually use in the game and so these actually have different abilities that you can unlock and stuff like that so how do you unlock these things you actually unlock them through missions which i'll show off now when you collect on the missions they actually have a ton of missions in the game it seems to be there's a select amount of missions but when you clear one mission they actually unlock other missions so it's like clear stages with s ranks clear within a certain amount of time do certain Certain things at certain stages clear sos missions those sort of things and so basically it's just like you know do these things and you'll unlock more cosmetics it seems to be set i don't know if it's random or not but it seems to be set because some people found like an item that you were able to unlock through you doing a certain specific thing and so i think that it's set and so when you're actually clearing missions you can actually go and try and find specific avatar items but yeah, for the most part, I got to say, I was actually very surprised with the avatar customization. I actually enjoy it quite a lot, and I like unlocking more and more outfits and more and more weapons and things like that, and I thought it's really, really cool. And the weapons actually changed the gameplay style, which we'll actually talk about a little bit later. I want to go into the Sonic gameplay, and then we'll go back to the avatar stages. But anyways, here is the kind of level selection you get this nice big sort of map and you even go to the death egg and stuff like that hopefully you don't consider that spoilers basically in this game eggman has taken over the world and so basically you are playing as sonic and his friends and avatar person and you are going back and taking over the world i've completed the game which is about three to four hours it's fairly short but we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get into story and stuff like that but anyways let's go ahead and go into actual gameplay i'm gonna go ahead and play the metropolitan area which is a modern sonic stage because it's probably one of my favorite stages in the game and this level actually does a good job of displaying most of the gameplay styles in this game. Most of the game is done in 2D or a very linear 3D style. And so here is the three sections and stuff like that. I missed a rail up there. And so you're actually able to fly around. There are a few different pathways that you can take, mostly in the Sonic levels, but a lot of it is linear or it's going to lead you to the same section very, very quickly. It is very, very fast. However, I will say it does have some weird momentum issues. And this is something I mentioned in Sonic Lost World. It is using the Hedgehog engine that they used for that game. And I assume they kind of modified that engine instead of going back to how it was in Sonic Generations which I know why they did that because it actually feels better than Generations when you're actually going through the different sections one thing I will say about these sections is you actually have a lot of control and so you can actually fall off if I hold straight I will just fly right off the edge 
So you actually have to control yourself a little bit there, which is something you didn't have to do in Generations, and I actually find it to be pretty cool. You also have Quick Step, you also have Dash, you also have the Down Stomp, everything that you would expect Sonic to have. And so if you hold down B, you can actually go down into a Dash. They removed the drifting and just made it so that the scripted sections will go over and just make it so that it actually goes in. And you just have to hold left or something like that, and it'll actually give you that extra boost. When you're playing the Avatar, it does this really cool thing to where they use their wire to actually grab onto it. It's called a wire. We'll show it in a little bit. But yeah, Sonic also has a bunch of other tools to where he can actually jump dash and stuff like that. He doesn't have any new tools, I would say. All of his tools are really just tools that he's already had, and so it's not anything new. He does have the double jump that comes back. If you have, if you are in range of enemies, you can actually just lock onto them and you will attack them. It does auto lock onto enemies, and so yeah. Also, I should be dashing through those enemies, but I'm not going to. And there you go, taking rings. The rings fly out as you would expect, and you can lose them. If you get hit constantly, it will just make all the rings disappear, and so there is kind of a penalty to just getting hit nonstop. Also, throughout all the stages, there's a bunch of red rings and stuff like that. I've already collected most of them on this stage, but yeah, and the double jump is actually kind of nice as well. Oh, hey, I can land on the side of Spike, so that's a thing as well. And so this level is actually fairly interesting because it has these sort of platforms. Every single level, just as Sonic Fashion, actually introduces a new mechanic and doesn't use it anywhere else, which is a little bit frustrating because the game is not particularly long. My main complaint with the game is a complaint that came around in Sonic Unleashed quite a bit as well, and Sonic Generations as well, to where the game is just extremely short. The game only takes about two and a half hours if you want to just go through just the main story and you go through it as fast as possible. It'll take very little time, which is actually true of most Sonic games. The problem is playing through it just like a normal doing SSOS missions and stuff like that. I actually finished the game in four hours and I feel like I got a complete experience out of that. There is bonus content. And so there's secret stages you can unlock by finishing more stages, getting more S ranks and unlocking more missions. They will actually unlock bonus missions. You also get these SOS missions, which we'll talk about those a little bit later. But basically what they do or we'll play one of those later. But basically what they do is they basically promote you to play a certain stage. They'll have you play as a random character and stuff like that. Also, there is the 2D Sonic stages and stuff like that. I'm not going to play through the entire one. I want to find one that isn't shown before. It's a ghost town for now. But yeah, the classic Sonic stages are just 2D stages, and they're just sort of like the... They're a little bit more classic in design to where they're more slower than the modern Sonic stages, and they don't have all these sort of elements to where you're like boosting around. They are the weakest parts of the game. However, one ability that did come into classic Sonic's artillery is the jump dash thing sort of i don't even know what it's called actually i don't remember what they called it but it's like a spin dash so instead of like you can't hold down and dash off the edge and like that oh right there was a giant physics problem i have with the game as well and it only happens at classic sonic but you do have the normal down dash so this is going to tell me tutorial and stuff like that because i just went backwards but you do have that but you can also jump and hold down the button which was actually something they introduced in sonic episode 4 which is actually fairly interesting that they bring that back because it wasn't in generations and i feel like it should have been in generations but yeah you just jump and then hold down the jump button and you will automatically dash so let's say you're having trouble going up a ramp or something like that instead of having down dash you can just jump and then dash like that it doesn't get as fast but it is you know one of the things also i found the collectible the collectibles are fairly interesting when you collect a collectible like when you get all five you know red rings and everything like that they actually do have like more collectibles as well so they have a five rings challenge and they have the timed ring challenge which is fairly interesting and i don't know if you unlock more after that However, they don't really have any bonuses for doing them. It's just kind of there to do it. There are missions for collecting the red rings. And maybe they'll have missions later on for doing the other stuff. I haven't quite gotten to the point where I'm doing all of them, which I will. But to get back into gameplay of, you know, Classic Sonic, Classic Sonic feels a bit strange because they removed the physics from jumping on smaller enemies. And so you can see I'm actually just jumping on top of their heads. But when I jump on smaller enemies, such as the Wasp and things like that, they got rid of the consistency to where when you jump on them, you kind of jump up in the air. And it has a weird roll-off system, which I think is a bug. And so when I actually dashed towards a corner, you saw a little bit earlier, I just kind of immediately fell down and just went down. I think this is a new mechanic because they actually use it in one of the later levels. But it feels weird and it is not explained. Oh yeah, also I just finished a mission. And so now it's just going to start throwing a bunch of stuff. This gets really annoying at the early parts of the game, but later on you stop unlocking things as consistently, and so it's not that big of a deal. But just always be like, hey, you unlocked all this stuff, and that is happening constantly, which is one of the reasons why I actually like the Avatar stuff. But once again, with that momentum stuff, there are a few points in the game to where when you stick onto walls, you'll just like fall immediately, or you'll get stuck on it and things like that. And it's, it feels weird, and the momentum is a little bit off as well. There's certain stages to where... I don't remember what stage I was going to end up showing, Fro. I'm just going to select this one. Oh, that's a... That's a weird one. That one has a water slide. Let's... Well, we could do that. You know what? Screw it. Let's do this one. 
because it shows off some of the variety and things like that. I don't know if they actually did any promo videos of this episode or this uh, video or uh, this level or whatever. Also, here's one of the multiple paths and things like that. This is the more foot oriented path, so we're taking this one. But yeah, so the game does have some multiple paths and things like that, which some people were complaining. There's only one path. Um, not really. It's about the same amount of variant paths as Sonic Generations, and the variant paths don't really offer all that much variety either. You can find red rings, and there's different enemies and stuff like that. Obviously, I could have taken a different path there. Over here, your entire objective is just to stay on here. You don't have jumping or anything like that, which makes it a little bit boring to begin with, but it's kind of interesting as well, like trying to collect these red rings when these little bastards are going around. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a fun game so far. And for the avatar stages and stuff like that, the momentum problems are not so apparent. I would say the air momentum and things like that when you end up jumping is a little bit strange and stuff like that. But once you end up getting used to it, it's kind of nice. Now, here's the actual avatar playing. So you're able to find wisps and you actually have different powers and stuff like that. So I'm using the lightning power, which allows me to basically use ring dash. And it's kind of like the Sonic Adventure 2 side of super dash and everything to where it actually like locks on. You also have a wire ability, which is this little wire, and it's going to use it for different cutscenes and things like that. Quite often, you use it to kind of use in homing attacks and stuff like that, which is actually playing into a really cool mechanic later on. Also, I just got hit, but I kept my ring because I am a cat. And I just flew off the edge because I didn't actually stay on there. One thing that is kind of nice about these so-called auto sections, a lot of people are trying to call these sections auto to where you're kind of going down the water side and stuff like that. You actually do have to have some moderate control. If you just like don't control and stuff like that, you will fall off. In normal mode, that isn't the case. The game will default to normal mode, but it asks you at the beginning of the game, hey, do you want to play on normal? Or do you want to play on hard? And so if you don't select hard, this path will basically, you could just hold down nothing and it will automatically go through the stage. Once again, that's, you know, the normal mode and everything like that. Oh, there's a red ring. I want it. I'm going to soak it. I'm not going to get it. Dang it. <laughs> oh, well. But yeah, so in normal mode, it will just sort of auto. These are auto sections and the levels aren't particularly long. As you just saw, that only took us two minutes and that's because I died. And that is another complaint about the game. The levels are extremely short and the extra stages are even shorter. Also, the game has a leveling system for your avatar. So as you're completing stages, hey, I'm completing these things over and over. Oh my God, the hammer is fun. But yeah, they have a leveling system. It bases off of your rank, like three honors is what they call it. Their honors or whatever. I got three honors and that seems to be level cap for everything. And so it promotes you to finish the game and you can create new avatars and stuff like that. So I've shown off the lightning ability. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my other avatar. By the way, loading screens. I have this on an SSD. However, the loading screens are still taking forever, which is a little bit weird and unfortunate. I don't know what's up with that. I think it has to do with the sort of characters and stuff like that. I went to the wrong thing. I'm going to go ahead and go into just to use a different character, just to have a different voice and stuff like that. And she uses a hammer. You can obviously change them whenever you want. You just go into here and you can go to the fitting room and change whatever you want as well. The only thing you can't change is the race, and so you do have to create multiple avatars for that, which I think is perfectly fine. You can also change the weapon whenever you want as well. So you don't have to do that when you like create the character, but you can end up going into it whenever you want. Now let's go ahead and show one of the interesting ones. Is this an interesting stage? Sure, let's go ahead and do it. I don't really care. Um, yeah, let's do it. Go. So the interesting part is they actually have, they have the homing attack and stuff like that. Also, there is um, wire lance sections of the game as well. Oops, sorry, just hit my desk because I was adjusting my screen. They actually have sections where you're playing with Sonic, which is going to sound super cringeworthy, and it kind of is. But at the same time, oh, hey, that's a giant robot. Here's one of these sections to where it's kind of like a quick time event. These I'm not particularly a fan of. It's going to end up showing up on here. It's going to be like, here's a ring, and you want to hit it when the ring is actually fine. Also, I love the character expressions and stuff like that. They actually did a really good job, so you want to hit it when it gets into green. I didn't hit it when it went into the green, and so I got a great. But basically, you just tap A through those sections, and it actually works perfectly fine. One complaint about that is it doesn't show when you're supposed to push it. But yeah, you get sections to where you're able to play as... Oops, I didn't grab the boost. Where you're able to play as Sonic. Oh, this is a boss fight. Ow. Well, here's a boss fight. You're able to play as Sonic and you're able to play as your custom character and you're able to actually use different abilities. I didn't grab those boosts, so now it's going to look really, really slow. But you collect those, you get the boost. The boosts actually charge up when you're either defeating enemies or you collect the boost capsules. I don't know why Wisps are back in the game, but it's just a thing. Here's the red rings. Also, you have the quick step, but you also have this and you can actually use your character. And then all of a sudden I'm using my custom character. This is actually one of the cool features of the game. And I'm going to go ahead and quit and find a different stage. I didn't realize that was a versus one. I didn't realize it was a boss fight. I apologize. But yeah, the boss fights are also fairly interesting. I like a lot of the ideas. However, they are fairly short and can be beaten very, very quickly. In classic Sonic fashion, you can hit the boss as many times as you can. And then it will just basically kill them. I don't want to show off the end stages. Where's another one of those? Oh my god. So I, 
All right, you know what? They have this feature for a reason to where I can just scroll through levels and we'll find one. Um, that was the level that we just did, so I don't want to do that one. Um, they don't have a lot of them, and it is an SOS mission, which I don't want to do the SOS mission to show this off. So that's unfortunate. That's fine. Fine. We'll do the OS SOS mission. So OSS... Oh my god, why am I saying OSS? The SOS missions are going to make you use a random character, and this is kind of annoying because right now, I'm just going to get myself killed because I don't want to use this guy. So the annoying part is online mode is supposed to make it so that you're using also SOS missions you have to finish in one run, which makes it kind of like a challenge mode. SOS missions are supposed to make it so that you use random online characters and stuff like that, which I mean, that's kind of interesting. The problem is it's not working. And so it's only showing characters that have no customization. There's another SOS mission. They show up all the time. Anyways, let's actually go into the stage. If you just fail it, it just removes the SOS. The SOS is like a challenge mode that just kind of promotes you like, hey, you should play this level and stuff like that. And there's different SOS missions. And so there's ones where it's like, you should finish this stage with this random character, which was one that we just got, which I don't particularly like those ones. I think they're the most unoriginal just because the system's not working. And then they also have the systems to where you're supposed to have it so that like, oh, use your character and go find the special capsule or go save this special ally or have this ally as your team. And then you can switch between them by using the left thumbstick. Here's one of the modes to where you can double boost as well. One thing this game does is it makes it so that the enemies are just complete fodder. And so you're just going to go plowing through them and stuff like that. But yeah, the interesting part about this mode is you can switch between the characters whenever you want. But it's not like switching as in you have to push a button to do it. It just does it automatically depending on what ability you want to use. And so we'll see later on down here to when I end up wanting to use the hammer, it'll just switch to my custom character as instead of actually making it so it's like, oh, hey, you have to switch using a button or something like that. Also, I didn't take any damage, which is kind of weird when I did that. But yeah, if I want to switch to the hammer, now I'm using my bunny character, which I have named Sally because my friend actually mentioned uh, Cream the Rabbit, which actually isn't included in the game anywhere. I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to make a rabbit then. So I made a female rabbit as well. Also, my capture software seems to be having some hiccups. And so that's just the thing that's going to happen right now. So I apologize for that. Hopefully it ends up fixing itself. I'm going to try and pause it and see if it ends up fixing it. And apparently it's not going to. So that's just going to be a problem. I apologize if the capture just ends up completely dominating itself. It seems to be running at a low resolution or not a low resolution, low frame rate and stuff like that. But here's the wire lance and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and talk about story. I did mention that there is no cream the rabbit, which is a little bit unfortunate. So basically, long story short, the characters that are actually in the game really doesn't have any relevance. The story is that Sonic or Sonic kind of failed to take out Eggman during one of his invasions. And basically Eggman came up with this new power. And so there's a new hedgehog with some new abilities and things like that. And they have illusionary powers and they're actually pretty cool. And I will say some of his stages are the best, but I won't spoil them because they are very spoiler heavy. So basically the story is Eggman 1, and so you're playing as the Resistance, and so you are a new recruit as your new avatar, and then you play as Sonic and Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic kind of shows up out of nowhere, and there's literally no point for him to be in the game. It's just like, he came from another dimension. It seems to be a tie-in from Sonic Mania, because in Sonic Mania, they introduced the Phantom Ruby, which is the new creation from Eggman, and basically it allows you to create illusions and control time which isn't 100% shown in this game specifically, but it is shown in Mania and this game kind of respectively. And it just seems like a new mechanic and stuff like that that they're using for a plot device and stuff like that. The story is a little bit serious and it's kind of annoying that after every single stage, because the stages are so short, once again, this one kind of took a little bit longer. So they're like one to three minute stages and stuff like that. This is one of the longer stages. But at the same time, the stages feel really, really short. And I feel like it's because there's a lot of sections where you don't really have full control. And once you end up finishing these stages, you end up going into a story section that's another minute and a half long. And then you go into, you know, another mission. It did pace itself well. And so it didn't feel like it was over encumbering, but it was just something that made the game feel shorter because I wasn't playing through a lot of stuff. Now, I can't play through too many levels because if I play through too many levels, I'm just going to show you guys the entire game, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, I don't remember what this SOS mission is. I think it's to save the capsule or something like that, or just finish the stage. I don't even know. But yeah, some returning areas. I think all the areas are returning stages and stuff like that. And so it's kind of interesting to see what they ended up doing with them. They do some nice variations and stuff like that. So it's not like generations where it's like, it's literally just the same stage and stuff like that. They didn't do that. It's not like Sonic Mania to where it's like, it's literally the same palette set. It's actually different palette sets in different weather environments. For example, Chemical Plant Zone. I just jumped off the edge there and didn't mean to. So yeah, multiple paths once, a while, once again. A lot of people have been complaining there's not multiple paths. There are just not in all the levels. Not all the levels like the last level we picked. There was only like two alternate paths in the entire stage towards other ones have a lot of them this is a problem in generations as well and so i don't necessarily see it as too big of a problem 
one thing about the rails and things like that is they did implement the sort of switching off between um, rails and stuff like that. So you can actually use the left or right stick or you can use the quick step buttons, which is kind of nice as well. But yeah, back on the story. Story's not particularly great. It's just, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog story, if that makes any sense. They did bring back the sort of edge that people like to call. And I actually enjoy that quite a lot because it makes the boss fights a little bit more epic. And so when you actually fin finally fight the new sort of boss and everything like that, he's like, I'm going to destroy you. You are dead and everything. And I didn't realize how much I actually missed that in the Sonic game. It's... It's a weird feeling because it's it's not good and you know it's kind of like just there and it's kind of cheesy and they actually add in a lot of humor and they kind of reference they're like yeah we know this is just another sonic storyline and it's kind of great because they go into ridiculous extents and stuff like that the resistance stuff that they introduce isn't particularly interesting and stuff like that and they don't really do anything to kind of flesh out the world one thing about the world, however, is that the world is not a bunch of humans. Instead, it is a bunch of animals. And so all the characters and stuff like that are animals and things. And so it's not like in Adventure 2 or anything like that to where it was like, Sonic and his friends are the only animals. And all of a sudden there's like, you know, a bunch of humans. And so they're saving the human world. They're not. They're saving the animal world. And so they're saving the animal world from Eggman, which is the evil human of the game and everything. There's the capsule. There we go. We saved our friends and stuff like that. And so... Yeah, there's also a lot of nods to the other Sonic. Where am I? I got lost for a second. This water and stuff like that, which is the unique mechanic of this level, will actually just burst you down to the floor immediately and stuff like that. One thing they also do really nicely is that they don't introduce too many mechanics at once. Also, I missed the shortcut path there, which is fine. I bounce around a lot there because when you use the boost, it's a little bit strange because it's too fast for the game, I feel. So sometimes when you're actually playing through the game, you don't want to use boost, which is actually something they introduced in Lost World. You don't always want to be boosting and you can't always boost because you don't always have boost. But there you go. I unlocked more stuff. So yeah, I actually enjoyed the story, not because it's good, but because it added some incentive to play through the game. And that basically covers all of my impressions of it. I mean, it's an alright game so far. I'm enjoying it. I actually like it, and I wish there was more. There is some day one DLC stuff that they did implement, which is the... Uh, I don't normally mention it because basically I don't consider DLC to be part of the game. However, it was free. And I don't know how long that'll last, but it's episode Shadow. It allows you to play as Shadow. And so we can go ahead and go into one of those levels as I'm going through there. It is three levels long, and that is about as much as the story as you'll get I as well. And so... Yeah, it's like 10 minutes and then you finish it and you're like, all right, cool. And that's it. And it tells you who the new villain is, basically. It's like a pre, I guess, thing. What are they called? Prologue. There we go. It's like a small prologue where you get to play as Shadow. The cool thing about it is that it unlocks Shadow in the normal Sonic modern stages. And so you can actually play as Shadow in those stages as well. Shadow has not necessarily unique mechanics, but he has an interesting way of going about it. They've just completely taken over the fact that he has chaos control. And so when you use boost and stuff like that, you are flying through the air like he would when he uses chaos control or whatever. And so that's actually pretty cool. I thought that was really interesting and Shadow is really well done. Unfortunately, it is a day one DLC and I don't know how long it'll be free. Currently, it is free during the time of this review. So in my impressions, if it's free, it's just extra content. Go ahead and download it. It might have been just finished before they thought it would be. And so they're like, all right, sure, just throw it with the game. But they can't like throw it into the actual disc versions of the game. And with how game, like developers and stuff like that have been porting games to PC, it just kind of makes sense to make it a DLC and stuff like that. And so there you go. But overall, oh, whoops, I missed that. That was a shortcut. Oh, hey, a red ring. Also, I'm enjoying going through the collectibles. So yeah, as a conclusion and stuff like that, as we've just kind of been objectively going through the game and everything, I've enjoyed the game a ton. However, I am also the target audience for this thing. And so that is going to be, you know, your mileage may vary depending on how much you actually like platformers. I think there's other Sonic games that are better than this. I think Sonic Generations was just a better all route game. However, this one does things differently. It is its own unique game. However, it does feel almost like a spin-off, which it might be. It might be considered a spin-off in-house and stuff like that. I also missed that one. Whoops. They are faster because Shadow has the unique ability to where you can just dash through them in these stages, which seems to be stage specific, not actually, you know, character specific. So you're not losing mechanics if you don't unlock Shadow or whatever. But yeah, it's there's better Sonic games out there. And I found it a bit disappointing overall because the levels are so short and there's not so many of them. Like I'm already running out of stages to play through because I don't want to spoil the entire game. And you could easily finish this game in an hour and a half. And that this video, we're at 28 minutes. And so basically we're running out of time to actually go through and actually show interesting levels. And so, yeah, it's it's not a particularly long game. And it has some polish problems and some of the mechanics are not fully introduced and there are some extra stages i guess i can show some of the extra stages that are like sonic generations where they focus on one core mechanic and that's kind of interesting and stuff like that so we'll go to the bomb block one which is one that i actually had a pain with because i kept 
failing at it because I kept over jumping and stuff like that. The momentum and stuff like that, a lot of people were complaining about the momentum. I found it okay. It's a lot better than Lost World. I had problems with Lost World and that was a huge complaint in that game. But overall, I found that it's just me playing it and how I kind of go about it. I tried to play it like Sonic Generations and that just doesn't work. And so you actually have to play it like this game. So you have to learn how the momentum works. It does feel strange, however. When you start getting running, it can take a while to stop, which is the momentum, but it feels forced. And so it's not necessarily as fluid as something like Sonic Generations. Like it does, doesn't give you as much control. That said, I also haven't fallen through the map or had any sort of control bugs whatsoever. I've just had intentionally weird sort of mechanics. In Unless that Sonic, like the classic Sonic to where he just rolls off the edge, unless that is actually an intentional, like not an intentional mechanic, that's a bug. Otherwise, I think that's actually an intentional mechanic because it happens every time. Oops, I let that blow up and so I died. I forgot how to finish that stage, but yeah, this one's just a timer base, so it's got the bombs and stuff like that. So yeah, as a con final conclusion, I think there are better Sonic games, but this one still does enough that it's unique. It's not a game I'm going to go and recommend to everyone. If you are a Sonic fan, then sure, go ahead and check it out because chances are you've run out of Sonic games to play because Sonic games, let's face it, they're not particularly long. And a lot of my complaints in this game, I kind of, you know, looked back at my other reviews and kind of looked back at what I was saying about other Sonic games. They kind of carry through. The story is kind of lackluster. This game actually had an interesting story enough that I was like, oh, hey, let's go ahead and just kind of screw with that and stuff like that. The boss fights, I'm not going to show any of them off because there's only like four of them. Oh, this is going to make me say or have a random character as well. So where I can actually swap out so I can end up showing that mechanic. So yeah, I end up pushing it. It stops the momentum immediately, which once again plays into it. And it just gave me this character that's not customized. I don't know why it does that. It's supposed to show random customized characters and it's just not working. I don't know if that's my system, if it's a setting in the options I missed or something. I don't know, but that doesn't seem to be working at the moment. They might patch it in the future. But yeah, the game's main problems can't be patched. And that's the problem. The weird momentum and stuff like that, maybe they could try patching it, but it seems to be in the design of the game and just the way the game works. Also, this is the new dashing sections. I actually love this. I think it's really, really cool. But yeah, it's just the main problems of the game is just the momentum. It's not particularly long and doesn't feel as polished as the other Sonic titles. That said, I haven't run into any bugs. There was the crashing issue that was on day one. But aside from that, I haven't really had any problems. My capture software seemed to be screwing with Sonic... Um, in a sort of big way and so I just noticed because I look over on my second monitor and I noticed that the sort of capture was kind of screwing up and stuff like that Sorry about that. Also the stages normally go faster But the hammer is a slower play style and so when I want to use it and stuff like that It actually takes a little bit longer and so how you end up going through stages and stuff like that People are gonna be optimizing to actually get on the top leaderboards for what weapons they want to use and stuff like that But yeah, it's just I've enjoyed the game a hell of a lot However, I didn't enjoy it as much as Sonic Generations or even Sonic Lost World. Although Sonic Lost World isn't really a Sonic game, this one actually has momentum mechanics and stuff like that. And it's a game I recommend. And also, the weapons actually have a special ability and stuff like that. I think I mentioned that, but here's the hammers to where you're able to just make platforms. Also, I have a hell of a time actually doing it properly because I haven't used the hammer all that much. I just started using it. Well, yeah, and also it's really, really fun to use the hammer. It's probably my favorite weapon next to the drill. The drill is also hilariously awesome. And I'm still unlocking new weapons and stuff like that, which is actually fairly interesting. And the extra stages seem to unlock them as well. So yeah, there's a ton of unlockables and things like that. And so the game is a little bit longer than the four hours and stuff like that that our people are saying. It's just that you will finish through the main story in four hours. And if that's all you're looking for, this game is a hard sell, just like any Sonic game. And if you're not a Sonic fan, you probably won't enjoy the game at all. It is a decent platformer, but there are better platformers out there to end up looking at. And this game feels like a spinoff. And that's my main complaint is that it's a fun game. I enjoy it a lot. And I think the momentum is something you just have to get used to. And yes, there are some weird kind of finicky stuff with it. And some of the level design is a little bit boring because it just seems like floating platforms and the extra stages and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's an all right game. I mean, that's really it. It's just, it's all right. It's not anything absolutely fantastic. It's a good game. It's just, you know, if you're running out of Sonic titles to pick up, sure. Also, I do have to say as a final closing comment that if you are somebody who's under the age of 13 or you have a child that's under the age of 13 and they actually are really into Sonic, buy them this game because they will think it is completely badass that they get to make a character and run next to Sonic because that is actually one of the coolest things. And to close this off, I'm going to go ahead and face off of Infinite because, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video, of course. Obviously, that wasn't the end of my video because I wanted to show off a little bit of Infinite, but I kind of did my closing comments and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, I guess I can talk about the Mania comparison as well. And so, yeah, it's like Sonic Mania came out and everyone's like Sonic Mania is really, really great and everything like that. And I actually have a lot of problems. I unfortunately never finished my review of Sonic Mania and got it out. And so I'll have that out eventually. I'm actually working on it now. 
I was gonna finish it up and then I realized that Sonic Forces were gonna come out and I'm like, oh crap, I should probably do a review of that because it's literally out today. I was originally gonna do like a short impressions video and I was gonna be like, all right, well, here's my checking out of it, you know, playing it for like an hour or two and then I beat the game and I'm like, oh, <laughs> All right, and so I just played a little bit longer did some extra content unlock some more cosmetic stuff unlock new weapons for the custom character and stuff like that I'm enjoying like playing around with the different weapons and stuff like that But at the same time, it's not something that's gonna be you know particularly great Also, I want to run into one of these to show you the illusions and stuff like that. Oh, it just never mind it ran into the end of that loop Ugh, I want to show off one mechanic because it's actually really cool. I really like this if you get hit by these it pulls you into an illusion I thought that was super neat. It's not something particularly unique, but it's something that's there. And I thought that was really cool because that's his power. And so, yeah. But as you see, boss fights are not particularly difficult. But yeah, it's it's another Sonic game. And it feels like a second-rate Sonic game, which is unfortunate. But it's still a great game regardless. It's, it's fun to play. So if this is what you're looking for, there you go. I just recommend getting Sonic Generations or Sonic Lost World before this one if you're looking for a truly great platforming experience. Anyways, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. And unlike other mechs, I can grow.